Good morning. There's a passage in Matthew chapter 16 that I just want to read and uh, share a few thoughts with you about. I hope you're having a, a good day and uh, I trust that you're uh, looking unto the Lord today and following him. In Matthew 16, uh, the Bible says in verse 21, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Uh, not the best of news that Jesus is sharing with his disciples. And obviously Peter responds, verse 22, he says, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Well, that's a, a fairly natural response, especially from Peter. But Jesus doesn't uh, respond well to Peter's response because he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. That had to be a stinging rebuke that Jesus made unto Peter. And then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And so Jesus shares this incredible truth about, about uh, what, what is required in following him. Uh, just as he's going to the cross, uh, he's, the, his disciples also need to go to a cross. And so, so he's preparing them ultimately for his death. And uh, uh, as he has this encounter with, with Peter, um, the main accusation that he levels toward Peter is you're more concerned with the things of man than you are the things of God. And really what he's saying to Peter is, Peter, you, you just don't understand God's ways. And because of that, you're not embracing God's ways for your life. Well, I would submit that's true uh, for many today. Uh, because we don't understand uh, what God wants for us, we, we don't embrace it very well. He tells him, again, in verse 24, that, that God's way, it requires a cross. Um, not that we uh, have to be nailed unto a cross in the physical, literal sense. That, that's certainly not what Jesus is talking about. But it does require a cross. And, and what it requires is, is, is death in the sense of we die unto self, that we might live unto Christ. Paul talked about that in Galatians chapter 2. I am crucified with Christ. Uh, just as Jesus was crucified on the cross and he was put to death, there's an aspect that I'm being put to death. I'm crucified with Christ, but even though I'm crucified with him, nevertheless I live. Uh, but it's not I that lives, it's Christ living in me. And so, so he's talking about that, that dying unto self that we might be yielded and submitted unto Christ that he might he might dwell within us. And so, uh, so God's way does require a cross. And, and, and for the disciples, it's an unexpected uh, cross. They weren't looking for a cross. They're, they're looking for a kingdom. They're not expecting Jesus to die on the cross. They're expecting Jesus to, to ascend to a crown to, uh, to ultimately become, uh, become king. And so it catches them off guard. And, and Jesus literally is telling them in this revelation, look, I'm going to the cross, which they don't accept well, or Peter doesn't, but, but not just that, but I'm not the only one who's going to a cross. Uh, you also are going to yield your life to the cross. And again, not in a physical sense. Um, and, and, and I would submit that's, that's not what they wanted to hear. But in all reality, that's not what we want to hear either. That's not what we're all about. You know, people don't want a cross. They don't look for a cross. Uh, they don't campaign for a cross. Uh, we want everything to be wonderful. We want everything to be easy. Uh, when we call upon the name of the Lord, we want that to be our, our fire insurance. We want that to be our, our, our parachute if trouble ever comes. We want that to be our, our cure-all for everything. And, and, and oftentimes we think mistakenly that just because we've called upon the name of the Lord, that there are not going to be any crosses. There are not going to be any sacrifice. There are not going to be any difficulties or problems in life. And, uh, and Jesus is telling them far from that, uh, that it's going to require a cross to follow him. Now, there's an event that I think 
uh, I think sheds a little bit of light uh, on this, this particular aspect. And so I want to flip over a few chapters to Matthew chapter 27. And in Matthew chapter 27, uh, there is a man who collides with, with a cross. And it's not what he was looking for. It's not what he was anticipating. It's certainly not what he expected. But this cross changed everything in this man's life. So in Matthew chapter 27, and in verse 27, the Bible says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall, and they gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and reed in his right hand. And they, they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spit upon him, and they took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And so Jesus has, has spent this time in, uh, in the, the hall of, uh, uh, of the soldiers, and they have, uh, they, have, they have literally abused him physically, and now they're leading him away to crucify him. And, and that would have involved Jesus carrying his cross, being paraded through the streets. People would have gathered. They would have, uh, they would have mocked, and they would have reviled the criminals on their way under the cross. Uh, and so they're, they're making their way to the cross. And it says in the very next verse, in verse 32, And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his, Jesus, cross. In a parallel passage in Mark 15, in verse 21, it says, And they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. In Luke 23, 26, again, a parallel passage, it says that as they led him away, Jesus, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And so Simon comes to town. Uh, he, uh, he runs across this, this crucifixion procession, and as the procession passes by, uh, Jesus dragging his cross, having already been uh, been beaten, having already been been scourged, having already been through the uh, the torture and punishment and torment of the soldiers, uh, his his body a bloody pulp. He's he's been beaten. He's been buffeted. Uh, uh, he doesn't even uh, Isaiah tells us his, his visage it's so marred he doesn't even resemble a man. Uh, but as he's as he's coming along, dragging that cross on the way to Golgotha, he crumbles beneath the weight of it with the exhaustion and and just the the beating he's taken and and he falls apparently at the feet of Simon and uh, one of the soldiers he points into the crowd and he says you you come here and he has him pick up Jesus cross and shoulder it and begin to drag it through the streets and and he's forced to carry the cross of Jesus and I want to share just a few thoughts about about him carrying the cross of Jesus and, and what it meant to him and what, what it does mean to us as well. First of all, when we embrace the cross, it brings us into the presence of Jesus. Think about this. When, when, when Simon bent down to pick up that cross, he was so close to Jesus, he could hear him breathe. He could feel his breath. He could hear him whisper if Jesus had whispered. And so bending down to pick up that cross, it, it, it brought him into the immediate presence of Jesus. By the way, it also identified him throughout all of history with Jesus. And, and, and I think the, the application is that, that I want to be so close to the Lord that I can hear him whisper, that I can feel his breath. I, 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 want, I want God's word to quicken my soul. I, I want to be excited every time I kneel to pray. I, I want to know something about the presence of the Lord. And, and, and so when we embrace the cross and when we, when we die unto self, one of the great benefits is it, it ushers us into the presence of the Lord and it gives us a great excitement about that relationship that we have with Christ. Secondly, it causes us to follow in his steps. We read it earlier in, in Luke 23, when they laid the cross on Simon, uh, they, they laid it on him that he might bear it after Jesus. And so there's this picture of Jesus 
uh, bloody and emaciated, struggling up the cobblestone streets of, of Jerusalem with Simon behind him, dragging his cross and following Jesus on his way to Golgotha. And so when we embrace the cross, it causes us to, to want to follow Jesus. It causes us to follow him. And so he's, he's following Jesus to the place of self-sacrifice where Jesus laid down his life. Uh, Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, his desire was that, he, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable to his death. Just as Jesus sacrificed himself, I want to in turn sacrifice back to him. And so since Jesus gave his life for me, I want to give my life unto him. And there's the third aspect. It involves us in the work of God. It involves us in the work of God. Now think about this. Simon became part of the greatest work ever. <laughs> Souls were, uh, were, were being transformed that day. Now, now, God could have used angels, but he didn't. He chose to, to use Simon. He chose to use us in this great work of sharing what, what the cross accomplishes. And, and in all reality, when, when we embrace the cross, it involves us in that great work of the Lord. Think about the transforming aspect of the cross of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, how it, how it transforms and changes lives and, and makes, folks, makes folks different. And so when Simon embraced the cross, he became part of the greatest work ever. And in all reality, when we embrace the cross and we die unto self and we, we follow Jesus, uh, when we embrace him, then we become part of the greatest work that mankind has ever known. And then one last thought. It, it changes us so that we are never, ever going to be the same again. In Mark chapter 15, you, uh, you find that uh, little, little tidbit about, about Simon that Simon has two sons a son named Alexander, and a son named Rufus. Uh, then if you go to Romans chapter 16 and verse 13, you find that, that there is a man in the church at Rome that Paul says to salute, to hail. He's part of the church, and, and Paul is acknowledging, salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, his mother and mine, talking about Rufus's mother. I do think there's a correlation between, between Simon and his son Rufus and this Rufus of Romans chapter 16. I I have no problem making the connection uh, that, that he was, in fact, uh, uh, the, same, the same young man that was with his father that day that witnessed what was taking place. And so, so I would submit unto you that uh, that, uh, that, that day uh, that, uh, that Simon was pulled out of the crowd to, to carry the cross of Jesus, it had a profound impact upon him. And it not only had a profound impact upon him, but ultimately upon his family. And I would submit unto you that if, if Rufus could speak about his father and what he witnessed that day, he would say, listen, daddy was never the same again. After that day, when he was compelled to carry the cross, he was never the same. Uh, that, that day, daddy picked up the cross. It changed everything. Once we got to Golgotha, once he unloaded that cross at Golgotha, uh, we, we, were, we, we, we couldn't look away. We couldn't walk away. We were compelled internally to stay, and I can remember standing there and watching what took place and hearing all that happened. We we were there when they nailed him to the cross. We were there when they they dropped that cross in that pre-dug hole. We were uh, we were there as Jesus hung on the cross and and heard the exchange between between him and the thieves on the cross. We uh, we, we we heard when when Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani? That is to say, My God, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? We uh, we were there when Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We, we, we heard everything that took place. We heard him cry out, it is finished, tetelestai. We, we heard all that. We heard, uh, we heard the centurion when he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. And, and I'm telling you, it did something in Daddy. It changed him. And it, it, it changed not only him, but it changed us. Our home was never the same again because of the cross. We were never the same. And so that day that my dad picked up the cross, he was never able to put it down again. And I know in my life, when I embrace the cross, what a transformation, what a change. And so this morning, when we embrace the cross, when we are crucified 
with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. It has a profound impact upon us as well. It brings us into the presence of the Lord. I, I hope you understand you have a rich relationship with Jesus, but it, it does that. It, it brings us into his presence. It compels us to follow the Lord. We, we walk behind him. We follow in his steps. We, we pursue him and, and we walk with him. It involves us in the great work of God. Think about, think about the purpose and meaning and direction God's given in your life. We're following him and honoring him and serving him. And then also it, it changes us in a way that we are never the same again. One of the great evidences that Jesus was who he said he was is the transformation of the children of God. And I hope you're different today. Uh, I, I hope that, uh, that God has transformed and changed your life in a remarkable, miraculous way. That's the power of the cross. And we're called to embrace the cross. And when we believe and trust in what Jesus did on the cross, and when we sacrifice our lives back unto him, Christ, you died for me, Lord Jesus, I want to live my life for you. When we embrace that commitment unto Christ, it changes us and transforms us and ultimately makes us a vessel that God can work through in changing and transforming the world. Father, thank you for the cross. Thank you, Lord, for, for loving us enough to die for us. God, how good you've been to us. I thank you for your sacrifice. And Lord, I'm grateful that you have given us the privilege not only to hear about the cross, but to believe upon the work that you accomplished, Lord Jesus, on the cross. Thank you that you didn't stay on the cross. Thank you that you didn't stay in the tomb. I'm grateful that you're resurrected and you're alive today. And thank you for the life that we have in you. Lord, help us, I pray, to be transformed and changed. And God, I pray you just use us. May we daily die unto self that we might live unto Christ. Thank you for the message of the cross. Thank you for the power of the cross. And I'm grateful, Lord, uh, for what you've accomplished in our lives uh, through that sacrificial act and through our faith in you because of it. Lord, help us today to honor you in all that we do. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. Uh, continue to pray for those that, uh, that we've mentioned. Lift them up in prayer. Pray for the Alford family. Uh, continue to pray uh, while you're praying for, uh, for Miss, uh, uh, Miss Mary Simmons, who had a stroke. Pray for Miss Faye, who's, who's battling a blood clot. Put my dad on your prayer list, if you will. He's having some physical problems and, and have been coughing up some blood for a while now. They're trying to figure out what's going on. And, and so, if you will, pray for him as we pray for these others. I pray about our nation that not only God would take care of the coronavirus, but that God would work in all of this. Um, you know, God uses everything that takes place to gain people's attention. So be praying that God uh, would get a hold of hearts and God would transform and change lives. And, and let's pray that God's will would be done in all that's taking place. Again, we love you. The Lord loves you. If you need us, if you need anything, uh, we're available. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.